I wanted to show you some uh, or an example of how we can use what's called conservation of linear momentum and I'm going to do it just in 1D um, and we're going to be looking at something called collision. So we're going to have things running into each other. Now it doesn't just have to be in 1D, it turns out it can be in 2D as well. So I think later on I'm eventually going to do some videos showing you that. But just to show the idea behind it, we may as well do it in 1D just because it's a little bit simpler to look at. Well, first of all, this word conservation of linear momentum. What do we mean by that? Well, we mean there that the total momentum, actually we should say the total linear momentum, just because we could also have angular momentum. And it turns out that's also conserved. But in this case, we're going to talk about total linear momentum. And when I say total, I mean add up all the different things you have here. And we're going to see that. So we'll have the total linear momentum. Um, of a system, and we're going to say it remains constant. That's what we mean by conservation. It remains constant. It remains the same. So I'm going to say, you know, um, unless there are losses in, you know, energy, we could have our outside resultant forces. So we're going to assume that there aren't any of these. Okay, so we're going to assume that there's no energy loss due to friction, there's going to be nothing due to sound or uh, well you could say or heat. So we're gonna we're gonna say that there aren't any losses, there are no outside resultant forces. So we're gonna assume then in a nice sort of simplistic situation that as long as you find the total linear momentum before it's gonna be the same as the total linear momentum after. I think that right there is a good trick. So when you're solving systems of, well, in this case, you won't always be told that it's conservation of momentum, but it turns out it is. So a trick, that's the total momentum before, maybe I'll just write this down here, equals the total momentum after. So the nice little trick I like to do is, you know, P before, because remember P stands for momentum here, P before equals P after. That's of course the total. So this I think is the trick to solving these things. So what I would do then is I would actually find the total momentum of the entire system before this collision, and I would find what that equals. And that value is the same as what the total momentum after is. Everything else all depends on the situation. Now we have different types of collisions. So maybe I'll add a little bit here. So we have collisions and we have different types. Well, there's lots of different types, but uh, the main two types you're normally looking at in high school at least are elastic and inelastic. So elastic collisions, what does that mean? That means the two objects bounce off each other. So in other words, they, you know, if one is going like this right here, and one's going like this right here, let's say, uh, well, in the end, then they, you know, they would bounce. So then maybe one's going like this, one goes like this. That could be one situation. So this could be before the collision, and this right here would be after. Now it could also be something like um, if you've ever played pool or billiards. If you're doing that, you can have a totally or completely elastic collision. And this is actually kind of cool where one ball comes in, and it's moving and the other ball is still. And what happens is, you know, um, so actually I'll just draw it. So let's say you could have this situation where one ball comes in, it's moving, and the other ball is totally still. And then after the collision, what happens is the first ball actually stops and the second ball actually moves along. And that's really neat. And that's another example of completely elastic. Now, when I say completely, what I mean there is that if it's completely elastic, so if something is completely elastic, like this situation here, um, well, that actually means that it's so we have something to do with the kinetic energy. It turns out the kinetic energy, so EK before, whoops, so the E K before equals the kinetic energy after. So 
So that's something actually really useful. So if we have something completely elastic, that means all the energy before goes to giving energy afterwards. So that's something else, that's something special. So we have collisions that are either elastic, so that's the, the first one, and by the way here they can be completely elastic or not completely elastic. But thankfully, at least uh, we're, what we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at completely elastic or completely inelastic. That means, you know, the opposite of elastic. So in that case right there, the two objects stick together. Now, they don't have to be necessarily sticky. Maybe it's because they've collided. So this could be like, you know, in a car crash where two different cars actually crash together because of, you know, the way that the wreckage sort of all gets mangled, they sort of become connected with each other somehow. And so in that case, we could say the two objects sort of stick together. So it's an inelastic collision. So that is possible. And in that case then, well, then you just need to be a little bit careful here. So in this case, maybe we had an object coming, uh, let's say an object, I don't know, something like this right here. And say we had another object coming in like this. So this could be object one, this could be object two. This could be before. Afterwards, remember this is still before. Over here, this is after. So this is before, and over here is after. So if we had a completely inelastic situation, well then they sort of, they move together um, and they're sort of glued together. So the two objects, then they move at some velocity afterwards. So it's all a matter of calculating this. So we, we normally at least deal with these two, one of these two situations, either completely elastic or they completely stick together, or they're completely inelastic or they totally bounce off each other. So it could either be that you know they come towards and then they both bounce off, or maybe one's coming towards and the other one is stopped, and then this one will the first one will stop and the second one will move off. So those would be examples of the extremes of what we can look at. So if we're looking at one-dimensional collisions, then we have a nice little example here. Um, I like skiing and I like snowboarding, so I'm not necessarily uh, picking on one or the other. I personally prefer skiing for steeper stuff and if it's really bumpy, but if there's lots of powder, I love snowboarding. I think it's really nice to float on the snow. So I'm not going to advocate, oh, skiers are better than snowboarders or vice versa, because uh, I really don't think that's the case. But I know in a lot of ski areas, you know, skiers tend to don't like snowboarders and the snowboarders don't like the skiers, but hey, we can live together. Although in this particular example, uh, they're probably not very happy with each other because a skier is moving south at 16 meters per second when she is hit by a snowboarder moving north at 21 meters per second. Okay, so we could still be uh, going down a hill. Maybe we're going down two different sections of a hill or maybe they're both sort of crossing the run. So one ends up going north, one's going south. In any case, we have the mass of the skier and we have the snowboarder's mass as well. And when I say the skier's mass, I'm including the skier plus the skis plus all the equipment. Um, so this might be, you know, a, a girl who's got skis on. This is maybe what her uh, mass could be. And this is a, maybe the snowboarder's mass. So the collision is completely inelastic. So when you read a question like this, I hope that you'll sort of think, oh, well, this is a key feature here. Inelastic, that's something important. What will be their final velocity after the collision? Well, completely inelastic means they stick together. I think that's the key thing here. So these two people are going to stick together in this collision. So what I like to do at least when I solve questions like this, I split up the entire thing into before and after. And what I do is I consider that nothing is allowed to cross this line except for total momentum. And that's because if I go back to the first slide right here that I showed you, total momentum before is equal to the total momentum after. So what you have to do, now this is gonna be a 1D example, in other words, in one dimension, but you could easily do this in two dimensions. I'll show you that in a, after I'm done, how you could deal with this if it was in two dimensions. But if this gear is moving south at 16 meters per second, well, let's maybe deal with this person. So we'll call this person, um, I think I'll call the skier, because actually if I did a little subscript, S would be skier, but S would be snowboarder, so that doesn't work. So I'm going to call the skier A, and I'm going to call the snowboarder, I'm going to call that person object B. So my skier, object A, is going 
uh, let's see, south at 16 meters per second. So it's like this right here at 16 meters per second. Whereas my snow border is going north at 21 meters per second. I suppose this arrow should be a little bit longer. Well, it looks a little bit longer than that one. But it helps to really quantify this, to put in some numbers. So maybe let's do that. So MA, in other words, the mass of the skier is going to be 70 kilograms. The velocity of A is going to be, uh, we need the vector version, so we need 16 meters per second, and we're going to say south. And therefore, I can find my total momentum of A. This is the key thing right here, is to find now. So even though, so because I have the mass of the skier and I have the velocity of the skier, at least initially, then I can find the momentum of the skier. So the total momentum of this skier here is going to be, well, 16 times 70, because that's m times v. In that case, it's going to be 16 times 70, so I just need my calculator here. So I'm going to say 16 times 70, and that's going to give me an answer of, let's say, 1120. So I have this case right here, 1120 kilogram meters per second. It's important to say the direction. So in this case right here, it's going to be south. That's important. So this is this person's total momentum uh, for skier. Now for the snowboarder, we have the same situation. So we have mass of B is going to be uh, 81 kilograms. We have velocity of B is going to be 21 meters per second north. That's important that it's north. And uh, we have then that the total momentum of the snow border is going to be, well, it's m times v. So in other words, it's going to be 81 times 21. So I need to say 81 times 21. And I get 1701. So that seems pretty straightforward, but it's really important though to consider this. Uh, what was it again? 1701. I seem to have a bad memory today. Um, here we go. So 1701, and it's going to be kilogram meters per second. It's going to be north. Now, what do I do with this piece? Because this is important here. I need this, and I need this. It turns out this was the key to doing it. And what I need to do now, because the only thing that can cross over here is the total momentum of the system. Now I've got two objects. I've got object A and object B, right? The skier and the snowboarder. So my total momentum, this is the key part here. My P total is going to be, well, just add up the vector sum of this plus this. Now you'd think, oh, adding is easy. I just say 1701 plus 1120. But no, they're in opposite directions, so I have to do a vector addition. In this case, because one is going north and it's bigger, so it wins, then I can say, well, it's going to be 1701 minus 1120. So that's going to give me, I can always just do it, so minus 1120 in case I'm feeling really lazy. And that gives me 581. So that tells me then that my total momentum before is 581 kilogram meters per second and it's going to be north because this north one wins think about it its momentum is larger than that one but because they work in opposite directions then and you can just take this one and subtract that one so this right here i would maybe put this in i don't know green maybe and say well that's the total momentum this is the only thing that's allowed to sort of cross over this line here 